triple C. I'ma make him bend the knee. Rolling with the triple C. Don't really count the heat. Did the same thing. Now he finally caught on. He finally, boom. It was expecting him to kind of lunge in as he did. Look at where his head's at, dude. This dude's like, he's not even in a good position either, but he's been able to make a living off of that. It's not even a check hook. It's like a limbo. Because a check hook is your whole body comes. Israel's actually leaning back. Boom. Look, he's leaning back. He's leaning back and throwing it. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Fight Feedback. I'm your host, Henry Segudo, a.k.a. Triple C. And Fight Feedback is brought to you by the one and only Fru. With 15 servings of veggies and vegetables in every can. As we all know, Triple C's making his comeback. So trust in Fru, and Fru will take care of you. So today's episode of Fight Feedback, I am going to be breaking down the one and only, the last style bender, Israel Adesanya. I tell you what, guys, a lot of people consider Israel Adesanya boring, including myself. But there's one thing that we do have to call him, and that's a winner. That's exactly what he's been doing. He's been dominating the middleweight division. Nobody could stop him. It's the same reason why I want to break him down. As you guys know, he has a fight. UFC 281 against a guy that he's 0-2 with in kickboxing. I want to go over the success that Calvin Castellum had against him. I want to go over some of the things that Israel does. His fakes, his feints, his tactical sense to kicking that front leg. Anyway, there's so much to talk about. Enough talk. Let's get to the big screen. All right, guys, so first fight I'm gonna be looking at, I'm gonna be looking at Pereira versus Israel. This is the second fight that they had. Again, I'm not here to pick on Israel. I'm just here to give the opportunities that are given and how is it that he's got caught with those, and particularly that second punch. So again, this fight took place in Brazil. Short notice for, for this man right here. And this fight, I'll tell you what, this second fight, Israel did do, make adjustments. He did make adjustments. But as you go back and you see, missed, but he was able to get closer. And that's what happens when you fight. Uh, that's where you'll have more probabilities with a guy like Israel Adesanya. You know, it's all about closing distance to eventually, look, he's closer, bah, catch him. And Israel, do, Israel does have a bad habit of leaning everything that he does. So I think for that fight, missed, got close, bah, caught him at the right time. But again, it's that little lean that he does that gets him in trouble. And it hasn't got him in trouble yet in mixed martial arts. Oh, well, I take that back. It did with, uh, with Jan. Jan was able to take him down. He, he'll, you know, he was faking up top to eventually go drop down at the takedowns. I like this fight because if, if there's anybody that has success is my brother, my little big brother, Calvin Castello. Let's look at the tail of the tape real quick. You know, practically about the same age. 5'9", 6'4". Look at this reach. That's crazy. That reach is nuts, man. That's eight and, what is it? What is it? Nine and a half? Eight and a half? Yeah. Eight and a half inch reach advantage. Crazy. Let's hit the play button. And again, Calvin's movement, Calvin's movement, and the fact that he was short. But look, look, look at look at how Calvin in the beginning was bringing the fight to him. The closer you could get to Israel, the closer you could get to Israel, the more success you're gonna end up come. You're gonna end up having. Watch, bring the fight, head movement, moving out. You know, just pretty much taking chances. Boom, caught him with that right hook. Taking space. Whoa, caught him. Kind of lunged in there, but it just lets you know that sometimes Israel's uh, Israel's reactions could be a little off. Like he doesn't necessarily have a. Israel he stays pretty straightforward the majority of the time. Yep, again same thing. Notice notice Kelvin's first his, his it's his second and third punches that are actually catching Israel. He'll smoke the first one, boom. But it's that one. He missed him, but he just grazed him just a little more. If he was to push, he'd catch him flush again. Closing distance. And, and, and we got to keep in mind, we got to keep in mind, though, too, even for Israel. You know, he, he'll, you know, that second shot. Bah! You know? You got to give credit where credit is due. I think he did a good job of just catching him. This is just, this is just a fight game. If Israel's able to throw that right hand, he's good. Boom, investing in the kicks. Yep. 
Now if Calvin's gonna stay in here, Calvin's gonna have to bring the fight. Cause if you let him get comfortable, this usually this dude knows when to throw. But what I do notice with Israel is his, his head, he doesn't have like that finesse of be, having the ability to move like that. Beautiful elbow. Beautiful elbow. Look, peppered it with the right, right hand. He felt his feet. And he just said, screw it. Bah! Calvin was letting him in a little too much without throwing. If you're going to be in the pocket with Israel, you got to go. Oof. That could have been a TKO, man. He caught a little bit of that tricep, which was good. Which was good for Kelvin. But he'll get creative with this stuff. This is the third round, too. Nope, you gotta go. You gotta get in deeper. You gotta get in deeper, Kelvin. Kelvin was doing the right thing, though. It was a, it was a second, third punches that were typically getting in. You know? Like, he'll go straight back. Look, look at how he leaves those legs behind. That's what I'm looking at. You could fake up top. You could fake up top, come at him, to eventually dive into his legs. Yeah. It, it's almost like maybe if Calvin would have thrown, like maybe the third punch could potentially catch him. You know, throwing that jab, boom, and maybe, you know, spark it up with another one. But he did a good job of countering Calvin. Now he's just sitting on that right hand when he wants to counter. Bah. Yep. That's, that's where Calvin has success. Calvin will have success. You got to throw. You got to go. You got to throw. People don't talk about this, but how much, how, how it's hard to fight a guy that's shorter. Yeah, you see? Notice how aggressive he is in the fourth. And notice how much success he's having. Boom. This is this is this is where Pereira needs to take the fight if he wants to win. Because if he plays this game, I mean obviously I don't want it to become a, a striking war, but more likely it's gonna become. But right ahead, head movement, coming inside, trying trying to close, trying to close the distance as much as he can. Yup. You gotta go, Calvin. Right there, you gotta go. Bah. Caught him with that right, but also got hit. But let you know, a guy with the left hook like Pereira, <laughs> it's uh, this wouldn't be good. This is why I'm saying like the aggressor. Ooh, beautiful kick by Kelvin. Look, he's wobbly, man. He's wobbly. He had him hurt. This is where you gotta run up uppercuts. When somebody's ever hurt, do you want to hit him right in the chin? He, this is where he messed up. And I talked to Kelvin all the time. I saw this fight. I was actually there live. I believe this was in Atlanta. He had him hurt, wobbling. He could have probably put him away. You know, I would go short punches, hooks. Sometimes straight, they're able, you're able to see it. But he, this is where he messed up. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? And then the fence is kind of holding this dude up. You know, he's able to recover. Keep the pace. Keep throwing those punches. Like, finish him. Bah. Yep. But notice how that caught him. It was all those. Can, can we uh, rewind that real quick? Notice how he caught him. He smoked the hands to eventually, you know, use the hands. It's kind of like what Robert Whitaker does. And he wasn't expecting a short guy to, but to catch his head. Had him wobbly. Look, you could tell. He's doing a good job. I can. I know he's hurt. Boom, again. He hit, if you're able to get that second shot, keep it on your feet, bro. Keep it on your feet. Run up uppercuts. Run uppercuts down the middle. Left hooks. But it, it was this that really set it up. And beautiful, beautiful kick by Calvin. Tactically, sometimes you gotta really be, you gotta really make sure tactically that you're, that you understand that, that the fight game is just a, it's just a, it's just a competitive co contest. But uh, you know, Calvin one took distance, and then two, he's explosive and fast. People don't have no idea how fast this dude is. I mean, if Calvin really wanted to. He says, prepare to die. This is the fifth, man. I was like, yeah, the fifth is what decided everything. Bah, yep. Doing the right thing, Kelvin. Doing the right thing. So this is the fifth round. This is this is what this fight came out to. Like, Kelvin did a... Kelvin was doing a good job, but look, there's, there's no more head movement from him. You know, if I was in Kelvin's situation, I'd be looking for takedowns. I'd be smoking up top. You got a bunch of his attention here. Boom, to dive into his legs.
Yeah, see, see now, now Israel's conditioning and the fact that he's kind of pressing the fight, he's having more success. You see, Israel, Israel cannot. I mean, he had that one left hook with uh, with Robert Whitaker, uh, but that's the only time that I really had have an ability to see him actually fight backwards, where he leaned and he caught him with that left hook. And right there, yeah. Yeah, now he's just like, now he's just challenging Calvin. He's like, all right, man, I know you're coming. I'm going to throw my punches first. And Calvin's got to go. Calvin's got to go. Yeah, head moving, dipping, peekaboo, Mike Tyson type style. You're the shorter guy. Eventually he gets caught. There is a minute 10 left. And uh, Jesus, man, this fight was like, uh, it was hard. It's hard to watch, but it was entertaining as hell. Made me wonder why I'm still fighting. <laughs> it was a blood fest. But look, look, it's in the fifth, 30 seconds left. This dude's now starting to put the heat. Now he's starting to put the heat on Kelvin. Now he's telling him what's up. Like he knows Calvin's demeanor has changed. So this is where I gotta give credit where credit is due. And Israel's doing a good job of okay. Now let's let me bring the fight. Now his energy's exhausted. He gave me all the power shots. I'm gonna bring the fight in the last 30 30. 30 seconds to try to get rid of this dude. Israel beat him, man. Israel about to fight, you know? But look, what he leaves behind, though, too. You know, he's walking as he's going. There's takedowns there. There's a lot of things. But all you 185 pounders, this is where you guys, I can't fight for you guys. But if I'm fighting a guy like that, I'm thinking takedowns. You know? It was hard, man. It was a hard fought fight. And here we have it, Robert Whitaker, the creeper man. This was I was actually at this fight too. You know, look at the look at the height difference, four inch reach advantage. I mean, Israel's reach is crazy, absolutely crazy. To 73, I suck at math, but you guys know there's a big, uh, you know, is it a six and a half reach advantage? But he started off very very well. Let's hit the play button. Yeah, so look right away. Right away, I mean, look at the difference, like, with him. And, like, he's playing the distance game. Ooh, nice kick. A lot more of that. But he wasn't, like, you figured you'd learn a lot from that Calvin Gastelum fight. You know, you got to be here. You got to fake. You got to smoke. But you got to get in here to be able to catch him. And maybe this is not Whitaker's forte. But he, he could have been investing in that a little bit more. Because that one little kick there could have been the, you know, you keep investing in those. It was good. I want you guys to see Israel. Look, just look at those tiny little little fakes, faints, which gets somebody to pause. And it's, it's not a good job of what Whitaker is actually doing. Look at the just not, slight little faint fake that makes this guy think. Foom, that's it. Make, make somebody cautious. I'm sorry, that was it. And then they, he's just trying to blitz. You know what I mean? Like head down the middle. Like Israel's being composed. Israel's really taking his time. Ba. There's that. Yep. Robert Whitaker. Robert Whitaker didn't have those short left and right hooks like Kelvin. Yeah, swinging, swinging wide where you're too close is not good. Caught him once. I remember seeing that. Caught him coming in. Caught him literally coming in, bouncing in. No setup. No setup from Whitaker's side. And he's just lunging in and going. Which I could tell. He's going to plant his feet. Now he's going. You see? And he's not really... He's not... There's nothing that he's doing that's hiding his... His... Uh, his combination. You start seeing the lean back, and this was right, ba. So that was the first time at the end of round one, and uh, and Robert, Robert just didn't make that adjustment. Yeah, yeah, caught him again. Yeah, lunging, 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 and that was it. That was it, Robert Whitaker. Did the same thing. Now he finally caught on. He finally, boom. It was expecting him to kind of lunge in as he did. Look at where his head's at, dude. This dude's like, he's not even in a good position either, but he's been able 
to make a living off of that. It's not even a check hook. It's like a limbo. Because a check hook is your whole body comes. Israel's actually leaning back. Boom. Look, he's leaning back. He's leaning back and throwing it. Which again, for MMA, if you get him to do that, he leaves his legs behind. Look, look. He's going to come back with that other one. And then he comes back with this one. But look. Look how close he is. And look at how out of position he is. Look at where his legs are. Like This is where you almost got to create and threaten a fight with Israel to be able to catch this. But if you're going to go blow for blow with an athlete, with somebody that knows how to lean, limbo it and go, it's going to make it so much harder. This guy, uh, Robert Whitaker, made three mistakes. And he, he and nobody nobody really corrected it, especially after that first round. If I was this coach, I'd be like, kick his damn leg, continue, stay at distance, you know, and look for takedowns. But I'm not sure if they actually train that. That one misses. He's winding. This one misses too. No, he caught him. But the, this one finishes him. Look, 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 look at how far back, but look at his legs behind. And look at where he catches. This is right on the chin. But look, look at his position. Like as a wrestler, I'm thinking of this right here. You can be a good fighter, but if you don't have good technical game plans, like you, you will only get so far. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, guys, like it's all about competition. Can I compete? Do I know how to win the game? Caught him. Boom. Yeah. By this time, I'd be like, hey, throw a couple punches. If you don't land it, get to your body lock, get to these legs. You beat a guy like you beat a guy like Robert Whitaker a couple of times, man. You're the real deal, because uh, I think I think uh, I just think this is I think Israel's uh, Robert Whitaker's kryptonite. It's not until Robert Whitaker literally starts to become more tactically sound and working on those certain positions, and forget about him starting a gym where he can become a a, a, a solo soldier, maybe go somewhere and uh, do your training camp is where he's gonna start to really see the benefits of. Of, of him actually getting better rather than, you know, just be like, oh, well, maybe I could beat him. Well, I think I'm going to because when you're more confident, you can beat him. And I do, and I still believe and I still stand by it that Robert Whitaker has a style, but can he use his distance? Can he, can he, can he take the fight where Israel's not expecting him to? Okay, so here we have Joel Romero, obviously the soldier of God, Olympic silver medalist, uh, I think 1999 and 1998 world champ. I mean, look at this, 42. You know, this dude's got a 12, 12 years above this guy. You know, six foot, six four. Uh, but look, I mean, again, Israel's got the reach advantage, but not really. If you know how to use it, it really doesn't matter. It's actually kind of boring and annoying that I'm about to show you guys this fight because this is one of the most boring fights in UFC history. And the person that I would be mad at is this guy right here. Just for the simple fact that, look, you got the wrestling, you got the striker, you even hit him with a good right hand one time he, and there was just there was just a lot of dancing but israel did a good job of playing the distance game kicking his foot and pretty much cruising his way to another world title defense so i warn you guys right now there's gonna be a lot of for those who like dirty dancing you, you might like this I was trying to figure out what the hell Joe Romero was doing. It's almost like Israel's like. <laughs> God. Why am I the king of cringe, guys? Why am I the king of cringe? I don't get it. Yeah. Just a lot of dancing. Like, I don't know what Yoel's plan was, but 30, 30 seconds went off and nobody did anything. You know, he's probably respecting his explosive movements and he's probably respecting his strikes and he wants to see what he has, but he's he's pretty much just covering. The whole fight was pretty much like that. But these little kicks, well, if they land, these are these are investments, man. Kudos, kudos to Israel on that. He recognizes, he recognizes investments here and that's what makes him right there. Right there, you can go back to that. There you go. 
right there. He just got, and there's a lot of time. Two minutes is a lot of time. He came in, but you well dipped, caught a beautiful right hand. Boom, I'm sorry, left. Heard him, look, he even, to the point where he even got his eye. Look, look at this left, dipped. Bah, right, right in his eye. Israel was just like, man, he got his attention. But look, he literally, when somebody's able to grab their eyes here, this is where you may want to look for takedowns then. But, but Yoel did not capitalize on it. This is round two. Yoel knows he's got to step up. You know? God, Yoel Romero's body's so freaking... Such a tank. Boom. Yeah. But notice, a lot of the punches that do come are Israel coming in and he's throwing. Yeah. He's at his range. He's at he's at his dispense. Bah, front kick. Beautiful front kick. Yeah, just keeping them away. I mean, this is this is three rounds. Like again, guys, this is probably one of the most boring fights in UFC history. But Yoel could have played the dance a little bit more too. Yo, not checking. This is what won him the fight. For bah, bending that leg. And this is what it'll do. Boom. It's another one. Yep. And he just said, this is where, this is where this man's going to continue to keep catching a lot of the guys who are not strikers. I'm curious to see if he's going to end up be kicking somebody like Alex Pereira. That was another boring fight from Israel. And again, dude, I'm not picking on, I'm, I'm just, I'm here. I hope you guys realize that I'm not biased, man. Yeah, I could cheer for a friend or whatever, but if I do eventually break my friend down, I'm going to tell you guys the damn truth. You know, so again, Cannoneer, oh, similar in reach. You know, let's go, let's hit the play button. This is Israel's last fight. You know, one single punch is not enough. Unless you're really dipping like Yoram Merle where he had success. Like I'm trying to figure out if a lot of these opponents actually watch Kelvin's fight. You know, you know, you, you, gotta, you gotta cover distance with these punches to eventually land a big one. You know, Israel's just chilling. He's just waiting for people now. He's at the point, nobody's doing anything to these legs. Nobody's kicking, nor is anybody actually throwing. There's that, there's that lean hook. That lean hook, if, if I was in those positions, I'd get for him to start doing that stuff because he turns his legs in. Every time he dips and he actually goes is when he, is when he gives his legs up. Yeah, he's using that as a fence. This dude's not kicking. This dude's, this dude's just going to cruise his way to another. Yep. He's not really, he's not that, he's, he's always planted, which gives him a lot more power. But he could also ki kick him because there's no, there's no way of him getting out. Well, this is, this is where Cannonier kind of got a little bit, that's, this is the most damage he did on Israel. In these positions here, you know, came to the clinch, but nothing, nothing crazy, man. I think with, with MMA, the striking does change, guys. Like, you know what I mean? Like, good old chain fighting. Just bring the fight. Boom. Caught him with that. <laughs> yep. Oh, something up the middle. Run something up the middle there. Yeah. But notice. Notice where he's catching him. In the close position. In the distance position. The more you're able to take distance from Israel, if he's not pressing you, you get him to go backwards, you'll have more probability of actually hitting. Yeah, and just watch it. Just look, look at look at how panic, look at how he's reacting to everything that Israel's doing. So, you know, he's just octagon control. I mean, this is, this is the fifth, but you can already tell he's like expecting something. You know, look, he's just composed, taking his time. You know, talk about getting someone to go backwards. This is how you rent. This is how you win rounds too, even if you don't damage. That's the second punches, guys. You need the first one to come in to eventually stick him with the second one. 
Calvin gave everybody the blueprint. Nobody's actually damn using it. If you do wanna, if you do, but I would say if it was my game plan, I'd be all over these legs, whether kicking them or taking them down, but also looking for the uh, for this too. They don't come. You start to hurt that, the upper body will open itself up. You know, and this is this is where Israel shines. Where Israel shines is his investment. Every time he kicks, he's damaging you. Whether it's inside or outside, you know you you if you, you prepare for a guy like Israel. You gotta be physically, you gotta be strong, but you gotta have the ability to be able to take pain, take those shins, take those kicks. But you guys notice here. Look at how Cannonier is just frozen at this point. Look at how much he's gonna let Israel Israel inside. Like he's not reacting. Look look at how close they are to each other. Either move back or throw. But don't let them come in that close. Look at how close their their feet are almost touching. And look at look at look at this right here. This is what I'm trying to get you guys to understand. This is where a nice little dip level change could eventually get a takedown. But everybody wants to strike with them because everybody's falling in love with this, and that's the problem. Know your tactics. Know your. It was five rounds to none. I was there. Boring fight, but. Israel just proves to win and it's all about winning so you know as much as I as much as much shizness that I talk about Israel the dude uh, the dude finds a way to win even if it's boring all right now I'd like to take Israel to none other than the whiteboard for me to grade him on the techniques the tactics and the threshold let's go okay so now this is the way I like to grade people you know from 1 to 10 it could be any any number from one to 10 on how is it that I grade a guy like Israel Adesanya. And again, dude, guys, I'm fair. I'm gonna start off with the, the threshold. What is a threshold? The threshold is the conditioning. How is Israel's conditioning? Does he have the ability to go five rounds? And I'm gonna have to say yes. I think that's one area where he's actually, where he was able to win that fight against Calvin Gastelum. So for that reason, as much as I don't want to people, I gotta give this man a 10. This is where I feel like one of his biggest strengths because it's not just based on ability, but the strength that he has in that particular era and how he's able to shine. Um, this, the second one here is I like to go over the tactics. Or you know what? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start off with the technique instead. And I'll end with the tactics. Uh, his technique, it, it, it's sharp. I don't see, I don't see any wrestling, I don't see any submissions. But because nobody has become a threat like that. He hasn't fought a Hamza Chamar. He hasn't fought somebody with really, really good wrestling that actually used it. Yeah, he fought Yoel Romero, but it is still yet to be known. But a little bit of the technique that I do see from Israel, there's, there's a couple of things where I think somebody could expose him, and that's you actually kicking him. You actually kicking his legs and then bringing in the takedowns. Because his, when your stance is so wide, it's hard. I mean, you can possibly maybe check but it could also you could also fake the the kick and come back with hands. Anyways, there's a lot of things there, but this was a hard one for me because I don't see any takedown as a mixed martial art. I don't I just don't see a lot of this stuff. But if if I just had to grade him on his technique on his striking, um, because he does get hit a lot too, um, I'm gonna have to give him a nine, a nine here. You know, I gotta give Israel a nine because. Uh, Technique or striking for MMA, it is a little bit different, you know. And you know, he, he did he did get taken down by by Jan and whatnot. Let's not forget about that loss either. And he wasn't able to get back to his feet. I mean, Jan pretty much beat him on his feet too. So for that reason, I think if you're if you have the ability to be a champ champ and you say you're that good, then you do it. For that reason, I have to give him a nine. Uh, for his tactics, he's uh, he. There's one thing that Israel does very well. He fakes, he faints, late kick, fakes, faints, late kick, and then the rest and the hands will kind of follow. So I think his tactical game is actually pretty good too. So even though nobody has really given him that, only but Young, but it was at a different division. So uh, for his tactics, because he's been beating everybody, even though they, if it's been boring, you know what? He's a winner, man. I'm gonna have to give him a ten. So this is a total of 29 points out of 30, you know. But if there's one area where he could get good at, it's gonna it's gonna be here. His tactics, he understands. Israel's a competitor. He has I don't know how many fights that, that he has. His threshold is good. 
you know but this is that one area where i feel like if you can add a little more stuff and not just fight everybody similar because you are going to fight an alex pereira who is out there to take your head off and uh you know this is going to be another kickboxing match do you have the tactics actually you know what i take that back are you gonna have i'm gonna give you a nine are you gonna have the are you gonna have the tactics to beat a guy and really game plan and beat somebody tactically you know so that's my score I get, i'm giving israel a 28 because i took it back out of 30. and there you have it guys you guys thank you guys for watching fight feedback remember guys fight feedback is out for you guys it's out of stores now you guys make sure to go to bjj fanatics.com search fight feedback where you get a chance to see triple c that's right yours truly actually dissect your fights that's right whether they're wrestling matches whether they're mma matches that's all you guys have to do go to go to bjj fanatics.com insert fight feedback and me triple c have seven days to to dissect your wrestling matches your striking your mma matches and send it back to you it's time to get better guys a big shout out to Froove. anyways guys triple c is out what's up everybody henry cejudo here the olympic champ and two division champ in the ufc and guess what guys i am here to let you guys know that fight feedback is coming to you yes i said it to you where I get a chance to analyze your fights and your wrestling matches. That's right, for you. That's all you guys have to do is send your videos to bjjfanatics.com, click on the fight feedback link, and I, Henry Cejudo, AKA Triple C, will analyze your video. So no more time to waste. Let's get at it, let's get better. Triple C is out.